in 2020, Kanye West made a controversial claim that new black rappers got sacrificed for profit in the music industry. The statement sparked a raging controversy between music enthusiasts as well as those working within the industry with many individuals deeming it to be an unfounded conspiracy idea. On the other hand, upon closer inspection, there is evidence to suggest that Kanye West was correct. The music industry has a long history of exploiting and profiting off of black artists, often at the expense of their well-being. Kanye West is correct that the music industry has a long history of exploiting and profiting off of black artists. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at Kanye West was right. New black rappers got sacrificed for profit. Yeah, you heard it right. The practice of making improper payments of money or gifts to radio stations in exchange for airplay is known as payola, and it is one of the ways that the music industry has exploited black musicians for financial gain. Specifically, this has occurred through the payola business model. This technique is especially detrimental to emerging musicians since they frequently lack the finances and relationships necessary to independently get airplay for their music. Instead, they are compelled to rely on payola in order to acquire exposure, which can result in a vicious cycle of debt and dependence on record companies and radio stations. Exploitative contracts are just another method through which the music industry has facilitated the exploitation of black musicians for the purpose of financial gain. Many record labels provide artists with 360 deals in which the label receives a portion of all the artist's revenue, including income from the sale of items and income earned from touring. Deals like these can be extremely lucrative for well-known artists who already have devoted followings, but they can be extremely detrimental to the careers of emerging artists who are just starting out in their fields. These musicians frequently find themselves in a position where they owe more money to the record company than they actually make, which can result in both financial collapse and a loss of creative freedom. In addition to these systemic issues, there are also more overt forms of exploitation in the music industry. One such instance is the promotion of black artists through the use of stereotypical images that are both racist and sexist. Images of hypermasculine black males and hypersexualized black women have been used by the music industry for decades as a marketing strategy to increase record sales, although this could perhaps lead to an increase in album sales in the near term. It also contributes to the perpetuation of damaging stereotypes as well as a culture that values objectification and commodification, the appropriation of black art and culture without giving appropriate credit or receiving appropriate recompense is another type of exploitation. White artists have a long history of copying black musical genres and profiting off of them without acknowledging or compensating the black artists who originated them. This practice can be traced as far back as Elvis Presley and as recently as Justin Timberlake. This practice of erasing black ingenuity and contributions is not only disrespectful, but also contributes to the maintenance of a culture of white supremacy inside the music business. The cumulative effect of all these problems has resulted in a culture in which black artists are frequently regarded as expendable commodities rather than as creative persons who have their own distinct viewpoints and experiences. Because of this, the music industry has become one in which the voices of black musicians are either stifled or co-opted for the sake of making a profit rather than being appreciated and supported. On the other hand, the music industry has made sacrifices for the sake of profit not only with up-and-coming artists but also with established musicians. Even well-known black musicians have reported being used and mistreated by record labels and industry officials at some point in their careers. For instance, in the 1990s, Prince famously battled his record company, Warner Bros, in order to achieve greater creative control and ownership of his songs. This fight took place in the United States. In a similar vein, Lauren Hill has opened up about the ways in which the industry pressured her to adhere to particular appearances and sounds, which ultimately led to her exit from the industry. She has said that this was a primary factor in her decision to leave the profession. In the end, Kanye West was on the right track when he pointed out the ways in which the music industry has put profit above the careers of black artists. There are a variety of ways in which the business has perpetuated a system that exploits and devalues the creative contributions of black people, including the use of payola, exploitative contracts, and cultural appropriation. Despite this, it is essential to keep in mind that black artists are not completely defenseless in the face of these obstacles. A significant number of people have expressed their opinions regarding these problems and pushed for increased control and ownership of their work. It is the responsibility of fans, industry insiders, and society as a whole to pay attention to what they have to say and strive toward making the music industry more just and equitable for all parties involved. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and 
ring that bell icon so that you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Stay tuned and we'll catch you in the next video.